Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. <laughs> Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Carrington, Joe, my fellow co-hosts and filmmakers, John and Lane Woolscroft. Quickly, what number episode are we on? We are... <laughs> we're not looking, we're not looking. <laughs> episode 134. <laughs> this isn't getting confusing at all. No, not at this all. This is much easier when we were on episode five. It was. <laughs> was it though? I yeah. feel like we're always like, eh, what episode is it? Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of our thing. Yeah, it's so part of our charm. It is. So we're on episode 134, and we've got a very special interview lined up for you guys, Woo-hoo. folks. Uh, we're going to be talking today with the uh, producer and lead actor behind a new independent film that basically goes the whole gamut between uh, action, horror, and uh, it, it's really, really cool looking. It's called Preacher 6. We've got Kyle Hester uh, calling in to yeah. tell us all about it. So, hi, Kyle. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if Thank anybody- you so much for having me on, first of all. I, I really appreciate it. I think you guys are awesome. So, Thank uh, you. And I'm, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and it, just right off the bat, if you're looking for it, it, it's Preacher, like, obviously Preacher, and then the number six, uh, you know, they have their own website, they got the Twitter, you know, the the Twitter. The Twitter. The Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. The Twitter. The, the, the social media. You're such yeah. an old. <laughs> you're yeah. such an old. So, you know, you know, check that out, uh, you know, um, but yeah, so uh, tell us a little bit about the film, and um, obviously, you know, as as being the star producer, I kind of I've- know how you got involved, but, you know, how did you get involved with this? I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing. Well, um, first, if you want to um, look it up, uh, it'd be at Preacher 6, and the, the number 6 is spelled. So it's just Preacher 6, all spelled out. Okay. And, gotcha. um, and we have a website, Preacher6.com, and that's uh, same same spelling. But, uh, yeah, so basically what happened was I, I had been um, involved in this other project for several years in the making – um, kind of being a a one of the one of the leads, but I was also helping to produce it. And and basically, when when money got real, quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, no real money, but like <laughs> the idea of money got real, then the 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 writer kind of like went crazy. The way that people go crazy sometimes when money becomes a thing, yeah, you know. Okay. So then, so then there's egos and and then all of a sudden like i find myself i'm not involved in the project anymore you know so and that's after putting years of time and energy and you know building the crowds and like all that kind of stuff mm. and um so i'm basically I'm, I'm in my backyard and i'm i'm kicking you know shit around and i've, I've got a <laughs> couple of cocktails in and and my wife is she's she's inside and she's all pissed off and you know so we're like just venting you know, in our own way that we put so much time and energy into this. So basically I, I go back inside and I, and my wife is, she's walking around the house and she's, she's doing this. She's going preacher like that. And I'm like, what are you doing? What is that? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and she says, I don't know, but it's going to be awesome. I just had, to, she, and then she's like, t- start telling me this idea that you had about this preacher. Um, who, you know, basically comes in and is like fighting evil. And, and we started putting some ideas back and forth. And we're like, you know what? Out of all the energy that we just put into this other project, let's just do it ourselves. Nice. So, awesome. Awesome. So from that point, she started writing this, uh, the script. And, um, and, and, we, and here we are, you know, having shot it, you know, uh, a few years later. That's so that's, that's when it started. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. You know, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. So it's been it's been a long it's been a long road, but uh, it's and a, and a lot of people and a lot of help and a lot of energy to, to get it done. And and I'm just uh, I'm so glad that that we're able to pull this off. It, you guys have an amazing cast here. I, I saw. Yeah. Um, yeah. Inc- including yourself here, you have um, 
you know, uh, and of course, I always do this with names. It's my trademark on show. I'm thinking Billy Peltzer, uh, Zach, <laughs> Zach Allegan, uh, Naomi Grossman. You know, um, you have a, a, an amazing amount of um, very talented people involved in this project. Like, um, considering we're we're independent filmmakers as well, can you kind of talk about what it's like to to get a cast like that? Were were these some of the people that you already knew, or was it just a casting call, or was it you know? talking to agents how, how do you um get like the kind of cast that you have here? okay well basically like um all of the the actors that that i brought on were people that i had been in films with okay. before so so i had um basically it's like i had this like mental list of like awesome actors that i've worked with and going okay if i ever had the opportunity i want i want to work with you again you know so so i had this like rolodex in, in my head and that's kind of how that is how it worked. You know, I had worked with um, mm-hmm. with Zach and Naomi on a movie called The Chair and um, and with Peter Mernick um, and Carmen Argenziano. I had met some years earlier on a movie called Andersonville. And um, so it was just like bringing bringing the, the people that I think are freaking awesome back together, you know, to do something. And I think that once once you kind of have that. Um, then it's like, that's what Quentin Tarantino does. That's what John Frankenheimer did is like, you get like your, your pool of actors and you'll, you'll bring in, you know, new blood to different projects. But it's like, once you know that you can trust people as performers and, um, and it it makes like a good set family, you know? So, so that's how it happened. And the thing is, is like, I would not, I don't think I would not have been able to do it just um, as a, a new filmmaker producer trying to talk to agents, you know, and like get, uh, all of that. Cause that can be a challenge in itself because their job obviously is to get the most for their client. Right. You know, mm-hmm. when I can like pick up the phone and go, Hey Peter, uh, you want to make a movie? You know, this is what we got. And he goes, yeah, man, let's do it. You know? Yeah. So, so it's like, that's the, the difference. So I'm really lucky in that way that, that these are all my friends. Was it the same thing with the crew? Because I, I noticed in the trailers, like, you know, and sometimes we get asked to look at movies and then you see the trailer and you're like, oh, no. But, you know, th- this is, you know, very professionally shot. You know, it, it sounds great. It looks great. Like, uh, did you have, like, a lot of uh, connections in terms of that? Or was it just kind of searching for, for your cinematographer, sound people, visual effects people? Uh, well, basically... <clears throat> No, it's a different story with the crew. Um, I some people were from the chair that uh, that I knew from the chair, but a lot of a lot of the crew was like basically just like looking at reels and and then taking recommendations. So Lisa Tom was our our DP, and um and she's awesome. So so she had you know her whole gear and her her camera and and all of that, and she. And I said, okay, so this is how I like to work is like, I'll take a point person like Lisa and go, all right, Lisa. So do you have people that you like to work with and trust? So, so that, I mean, yes, I can go crew it up and find people, you know, but it's like, if you have people that you know and like to work with, then that's, that's how I like to work because then you have the DP who already trusts her people, you know, with that can, they have a flow, right. you know, so you don't have yeah. to come on and like, where like first they said everybody's meeting each other, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you don't mm-hmm. really want that because so, people seem to trust each other already, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like they have a work history, so it's like when she goes, "Oh yeah, I need the thing uh, that's in the bag over there," and he'll go, "I know what you're talking about," you nice. know. So that's awesome. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's a familiarity. Now, but, uh, yeah. but yeah. Now, did you have any desire to direct yourself, or did you always want to? Um, kind of quote unquote like pass that off because it obviously produced wrote starred in it did you have any desire to direct it or was that always something that you were going to to hand off so to speak uh, i i consider myself like a creative producer like so i will always have input on the look and in the feel and and like I'll, I'll jump in and like help actors with performance and that kind of thing um but I don't know anything about cameras. I don't know anything about lenses. I could tell you like how to set up a shot, you know, like, Oh, let's do a cowboy shot. It's like, what is that with a horse? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. so, so it's like, I would not, I wouldn't trust myself to direct a film. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that's a whole other thing that um, I wouldn't want to put a whole crew of me learning lingo, you know, to, to get something done. And, and honestly, you know, so, like, that's, that's good to hear because I think a lot of times, um, you know, especially, you know, new filmmakers, they want to basically be the master of everything right out of college and yeah. right out, you know, yeah. they're like, Oh, well I want to act. And I also want to direct it. And it's like craft services as well. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it, it's, it's like, okay, that's fine. But you have to understand that, you know, maybe you pick one of those specialties that you're really, really good at. And it sounds like you, you know, you've already figured that out. Like, you know, I rather have, you know, I want this movie to be the best it's possibly going to be. So, you know, getting someone who that's what they specialize in and then, you know, you handling the the creative production side, you know, that's, that's, that's where you want to be at. Yeah. I mean, basically like as, as a producer, you know, you, you are responsible for everything, right? you know? So like every, every hire and every person that comes on and every you know, stuff, so like if the art department is, sucks, it's your fault, right? you know, because you brought them on, you know? So, so it's the same, it's, it's the same kind of thing where it's like, I'll, <laughs> I'll oversimplify this. So all I have to do is get awesome people. Yep. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. all. That, you know that is more than half you know, the battle. That, that is half the battle, though. You're, can I get you a cup of coffee? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, of course, that's not what it's really like. But yeah, but ultimately, you know, it's like if, if you have a good picker and and know, you know, what you're looking for and know that, like, to do a film, you have to have good sound, you know, so you can't just, you know, boom, mic a whole film or it's going to sound like every other B-movie, you know? So mm-hmm. it's like you have to have all the things that are going to make a movie look and feel like a movie, mm-hmm. you know? And like, and you have to know that like you have to color correct it when you're done. So that it looks like a movie, mm-hmm. you know, otherwise it's all going to be like blown out, you know, daylight colors and like, Oh, I'm looking at a video camera, yeah. you know? So there's right. like so many things that go into it to making a movie and being proficient at those things. Do I know how to do any of that? No, I don't. I'm an actor. I've been that's like, that's what I've done my whole life but I know what it, what it should look like. You know right. what I mean? So I can communicate, Hey, how do we get this to look like that? And then someone will go, Oh yeah, well you just use it this and this. And I have that, you know, hue and I put these buttons over here and use this program. And I'm like, fucking hey, that's awesome. Do that. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. sorry, just to, just to backtrack a little bit. How did you, um, kind of get into uh, professional acting? Like what was, uh, your kind of break and, you know, can, uh, as, as, which much brevity as you can, you know, <laughs> but can you, can, can you kind of lead us up to, um, where you started and how you kind of got to, to here? Yeah. Uh, you know what, honestly, this has been like my whole deal since I was in the seventh grade, you know, yeah. it, it was like, I, it's where you, you get the bug and, you know, I was in drama class and did all that whole thing. And then I just saw fame on television when I was in the seventh grade and I was like, Oh my God, what is this? Is there a high school like that here? You know, <laughs> can I dance on tables like in at my school? Yeah. And, um, and sure enough, you know, there was a performing arts high school in Houston and, and I auditioned for that. And then I did, did do that. And I did dance on tables because that's what you're supposed to do at a performing arts high school. Living the dream. So <laughs> living the dream. And then I, yeah, I went to Cal arts. And, um, so basically to answer your question, I, it's been my lifelong passion is, is acting. Gotcha. Awesome. So my that's first, cool. my first, uh, what was the first? We did a film called the uh, Rock and Roll Fantasy in L.A., mm-hmm. which was actually David Latt's first film in L.A. Oh. And if you don't know who David Latt is, um, he is uh, the producer of um, Sharknado. You know, so oh, he wow. did. Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah, nice. That's fun. yeah. So all all of those films, like you know that. <laughs> Godzilla versus we you know whatever and so he like <laughs> takes the time hey, you know what I mean yeah so, so asylum asylum films oh all this asylum film. yeah nice. so so I was in his first film out here I played like a, a college prep guy doing a panty raid or something like that <laughs> oh something my god ridiculous. you know yeah and um so yeah so that was that was the first thing and then you know, when I did some did Last Dance in Andersonville, um, in Georgia. Did some theater out there at the Alliance Theater, and um, it's it's been it's been a road. Very cool. Awesome. 
Uh, so how long is, is uh, Preacher Six? Like, do, do you have like a rough runtime of what you you're looking at? Um, it's it's going to be close to two hours. It was like 110 pages, the script. So and and we did it we did it in like two halves, kind of like. So when I first started raising money, this was like two years ago. We had raised like ten thousand dollars or something like that, and it was like, all right, this is this is a slow trudge, you know. So how are we ever going to get this done? So I was like, fuck it, Grady, I'm coming to Arkansas. We're going to shoot some of the film. So then, that's what we did. So I went to Arkansas and we shot like that that first trailer where you see me um, running through the forest and, you know, getting choked by the guy that all was in Arkansas. And then, so we used the footage from that to make that first trailer. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then that's how we ended up funding the rest of the film and getting people excited. Cause then people could see, Oh, this is what it is. So it's like, yeah. Oh, and you, you can, you can act and that doesn't suck at all. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you, Twenty five dollars or whatever, right? You know, so now, that's. Oh, go ahead. What was that? Oh no, I I I was gonna say now. Now the film has already been shot, correct? Like the whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah so we, it's really it just is, completion is, funds and so all that fun stuff. And post. Awesome. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, you can check out Preacher Six and GoFundMe if you want to support independent filmmaking. So definitely go look that up. Yep. Um. So what kind of um. What what did that entail time wise to, to direct a two hour movie with you know a lot of action sequences and a lot of a special effect shots? Like how long did um, the shooting process take for you for something like that? Okay, let's see. So the first the first part um, I was in, we shot for like ten days in Arkansas, mm-hmm. and then uh, so that was that was the first bit, and then a lot of that special effects stuff that you see was was done here um on a sound stage and um and so we shot the the rest of the film on a t- 12 days whoa wow so 20, 22 day shoot so I'll, t- I'll tell you what it's like going into something like that you have to know exactly what you're doing like every day mm-hmm. definitely you know, to get to get shots and there's no there's no really like the ability because everything's so expensive you know, it's like just the soundstage alone, you know, it was like $10,000 just for that, you know, just for the, those two, two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like, and you know, it takes a long time to raise $10,000 unless you have like, you know, big investors, mm-hmm. which, um, which fortunately, you know, we did have some, some angel investors, uh, come on to, to help us, uh, pull it off at, at the, uh, when we were about ready to shoot, which is fantastic. Um, but uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I tried, oh yeah, just how long it took to uh, to shoot like a feature length film, especially with like twenty two, you know, a lot of action and everything. So yeah. Um, oh yeah. yeah. It was there was a learning curve to that. It's like when when um, because Grady and I, Grady Earls is the director. So when we were out in Arkansas, it was a very small crew. It was just kind of like him and I and a few other people and the actors. So so then coming on to here when you have like a big kind of machine Mm -hmm. you know that you're trying to to corral it was a little bit like okay we don't have time to set up this particular shot on this particular like they have to pick and choose like what's worth it to get like a cool shot versus how much time do you have right yeah you know so then and because especially like with with some of the action sequences it's like it's, you've got to go dirty you got to go handheld you know just to be able to pull off how many how many shots you need and to get your coverages and and all that kind of stuff and and so that was something that um that lisa she's a um, an amazing cinematographer uh, but she wasn't used to doing as much like handheld stuff as grady was so, so like we, after a few days of like going, okay, this is how we're going to have to do this. So we can like trade off some, like some cool, you know, dolly shots and whatnot with some handheld. And so we can get, so we can get our days and we, and we got them all. I mean, so it, it, it worked, but it's like, it's like a big, uh, 
getting getting everybody on the same page and then you making sure that egos aren't bruised and right. you know that we're all working together and um it's it is a it's a challenge but it's a it's a hell of a lot of fun as you know now can you can you speak to to some of the visual effects in the film because i know especially with indie uh films is that pretty much you know doing a lot of visual effects it becomes a challenge and can you speak to some of how you maybe you know you guys solve that problem of dealing with a very visual effects heavy film um on such a tight budget um that you that's one of those things where that's it's great girls gotcha. that is he is a wizard so uh, yeah i can't i can't even really you know speak to that i can say that like we we did have like a big coved green screen mm-hmm. you know side it's like we can go okay so this is like in that alley that's out there and whatnot and we're gonna like paint that back in behind you and so it's like you can kind of give people the image of, of what's going on but it's it's all in grady's head Gotcha. You know, so. I actually feel weird we got this far, but uh, I don't think we've actually asked. Uh, can you kind of give a synopsis of Preacher 6? I was just going to say, we gotta get we all talk, bogged down in the details, can we talk but, yeah. Preacher 6 a bit? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, well, Preacher 6 is about a small town preacher who ends up coming to the big city and fighting demons in a literal sense. So um, it's, uh, it's like a reluctant superhero kind of thing. Mm. So and it's it's not um it's not like a religious film, you know, at all. I mean, I've been asked like you know what's the denomination you know, of it, and I'm like, no, not going there, <laughs> not going there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not a Dove Foundation project. Is no, what you're saying. yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, no, no, exactly, exactly. So for you as a producer and then as an actor in the film, was it hard to switch between those two roles while on set? You know, I know every every professional in film says, you know, I wear many hats now. Was it was it tough to switch hats? Um, no, OK, it wasn't tough to switch hats, but it was tough being in the position of being the actor and being the producer where you have to have things a certain way right. so that you're not, um, cause it doesn't always go the way that you want it to, you know? And like people drop the ball on things. So it's like, so I have to basically throw water bottles in the alley without being that angry, um, at people, you, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's the that's the challenging part is managing something that's so big and so stressful, you know, and keeping everybody on an even keel and happy to make to have a good happy set. Right. You know, which we did. I mean, like, you know, they're all my friends and everybody gets along and so we didn't have any there weren't any issues, so I don't wanna I don't want you to think that there were because there no, weren't. No. But um yeah, but it's so it's just like do we have the this for, you know, for this scene? And you go, oh, you needed that, and it's like that's today. Like when you have those kinds of <laughs> right, like, like really, sure. <laughs> you know, yes, send somebody right now to go get that from this place, please. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So because it's like you know, as you know, it's like once you have your day at a days, you know, which is your shooting schedule, then you know you're shooting a certain thing on this day, and it's like mm-hmm. in two, you have actors that are only here for a certain point of time since so the they can be, they can do this so so it's like if you don't have the whole you know all your ducks in a row right. then you can get into trouble you know right. which we did but um but it's it is very possible i've been on sets that things got completely lost because somebody just made a mistake right. you know right it's a collaborative sport no. so if one ball gets dropped it's kind of bad for the whole team yep very much so. Yeah, absolutely. So, what is um, what does distribution look like for something like this? You know, it's um, it's you know, for any aspiring independent filmmakers out there, it's it's one thing to make a film, but then it's hard to know how to get it out there. So, what what is the distribution model that you're looking at here for this? We are going to self distribute. Okay. Okay. So, okay. 
Yeah. So um, there's this. Uh, I, I have no affiliation with them, but there's a company called Distribber. dot uh, com, and basically, you know, they can if you give them a certain amount of money per platform, they can get you on the platforms. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, so basically, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a DVD release first. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, so. Yeah, and that's going to be, and we're going to do it through Indiegogo and Kickstarter concurrently. So, oh, so, cool. so you have, so you have the audience for, for both of those platforms that you wouldn't necessarily see it just from a tweet, you know. Um, right. So, so, and yeah, so we're basically, you know, put the limit at five hundred dollars. You know, we're trying to raise five hundred dollars. You know, and then it'll it'll be successful like immediately. You know. And then, so that's so people won't know that that's that there's really a goal on it. You know what I mean? It's like the goal is this is the DVD release, and it's only going to be available like this, you know, for probably like three or four months before it goes to the other uh, the other streaming platforms. Like, yeah, you know, and we'll do you know iTunes and Amazon and Google Play and like all those things. But um, it's like if a distributor's job is to get you onto the platforms. Mm-hmm. Then, and if you have a way to do that, then why give away half of your film? True, it's true. That's no, true. That's two someone that's going to do the same thing. And so, um, so it's like <laughs> if a distributor reached out to me and said, "I'll give you a million dollars for the rights to your film," then I'd say, "Okay, you have changed my mind." But, right. uh, but, but it's like I've heard so many nightmare stories of filmmakers never seeing a nickel once they give their, their film over to sure. a distributor, yeah. you know, because then the, with the distributor, hello squirrel, um, <laughs> squirrel, right. literally just, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so, so basically once, uh, once, once you have, once you've given it to a distributor and then they, they tack on, you know, they're going to remake the, the trailer, you know, and that's going to be, they're going to charge you for that. And then they're going to redo your art poster because they know how to do it better, you know? And so that's debatable. They ta- <laughs> if they know how to do it better, <laughs> no, no, no. perhaps you sense my sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, so then, so basically, so they tack on all of their money mm-hmm. first and they get paid back first. Yeah. So like before a filmmaker starts seeing a nickel, it's like all of a sudden a distributor goes, "Hey, hey Johnny, hey make up uh, make up one of those posters real quick here. We're gonna charge him ten grand for this." You know, it's like sure. so. So that ends up happening, and well, then yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's also a matter of like plus, they're not doing the like, marketing plus, of it plus either. They're getting <laughs> what's that? They're not doing the marketing. Like I've seen, dis- right. I've seen distributors that they're like, "Yeah, I'll put it on the platform and." Uh, I'll I'll put it up on you know Amazon and I'll put it up on iTunes and I'll put it up on you know not Netflix because Netflix is a whole other beast in and of itself but they'll put it on any of those video on demand sites and then they'll be like yeah but you're responsible for marketing it and it's like well what use are you then <laughs> like that that's right, exactly exactly so that is exactly my point so um and, and the thing is is like there used to be you know upfront money deals from distributors and that kind of thing. And that just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. You know, unless you're, you know, a big, a big movie, you know, which right. is not what we're talking about. You know, we're not talking about studio films, you know, it's like, how does, how do you and me, you know, how does like, how do we put in all these years of our life and, and training and ability and people and connections. And then how are we able to make, the money back for the, for sure. at least, you know, the, uh, the people that put money into it. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So, so to me, that is my biggest responsibility. Okay. You, you know, is, is to make that, to make that happen. And if there's a chance that, uh, that, you know, I, I would be just another one of those stories that like, yeah, preacher six, somebody picked it up and then they put a bunch of money on it and they, they kept like, you know, padding their, their print and advertising, you know, numbers. And then like, yeah, the second quarter preachers just got paid back $2,000. I'd be like, go fuck yourself. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So I, 
Excuse me if I wasn't supposed to say bad words. Oh, no, we say... Oh, no, go nuts. We say so... This is... That's mild, honestly. We are filthy pirate assholes on this show. So then... So then by... So basically, so that's my plan, is to do a DVD release first, and then get it on the platforms, and, you know... All of those funds will come back into the production company, and then I'll be able to pay back investors. So right. that's what's going to happen. And hopefully, you know, it, it continues, and then we're able to make another movie from that. I mean, that's the goal. Right. You, just you know, my, my goal is not to, to crowdfund, like, every film, because it's a lot of work. That's a full-time job. Like, yeah. just mm-hmm. raising money for a film is a full-time job. Well, what has your experience with crowdfunding been like? Was this the first time you did something on this scale, like in the crowdfunding arena or? Um, well, I'll tell you, no. Uh, I had learned, I, I was on a, a film called The Chair. Um, and that's, uh, Peter Samedi is the creator of that. He's a, a comic a distributor and a comic artist. And, okay. and so he had this film called The Chair. And I was brought on as an actor um, to it. And then basically I ended up producing it here, here in L.A. Mm. But he had, done, he had done all of the, the crowdfunding because he had already had that machine set up through his comics. Mm. Okay. So, so I kind of learned how to do it from watching him do it. I got so, you. Yeah. So then, so he, and he did the same, same thing, kind of combination of like uh, crowdfunding with Kickstarter and then also private investors. So that seemed to be the formula that could get a movie done, you know? Nice. So, and then I, I went from that. Um, and then we did, did a little film with um, Hilton Ruiz called the zombie with a shotgun. And that is in editing. Now I think it's actually going to be, have a little premiere in New York next month. Oh, nice. Cool. That's so, great. Uh, that has the yeah, most amazing title. It, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> What's that? So that has the most amazing title I've ever heard. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Zombie with yeah, a shotgun. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, uh, so basically, so I had done it like four other people a couple of times. And then, you know, I told you at the beginning, the first story about the film that we, that we lost. Mm-hmm. And then, so it's like, okay, well, Let's let's do this for for ourselves, and now here we are, you know, with uh, with Preacher Six, and then we're you know, then our next film is a, is a modern western, you know, called The Coop. Nice. So that's going to be uh, we're going to launch the Indiegogo for that in April, and so that's at The Coop Film. You want to check that out on on Twitter. Great. But um, and that's yeah, that's again, completely different. So it's going to be like a no <laughs> no green screen, all all practical, real drama action stuff. For aspiring filmmakers out there, since you, you know, you, it sounds like you've had with the past couple movies you worked on, including Preacher Six, um, really been able to kind of fine tune how to raise money for projects. What advice would you give to filmmakers who are in that process now? Uh, I would say it's all about um, personal relationships. So, and, and also it's like, view yourself as your own studio. Mm-hmm. But it, once you, once you can kind of click that in your mind is like, Oh, I don't have thousands of dollars for advertising that I can't put a commercial on, you know, about a film or about raising money. So how, so how do you do it then? Well, you have to get, you have to know people and you have to have an audience. So then how do you get an audience? So you follow people. You follow people like on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram that you think might give a shit about what you're doing. Right. That's cool. And, and if they do, they'll follow you back. Yep. You know? So, so basically that's just a, and then you get to know them and you say, Hey, thanks for giving me a phone. Check out what we're doing. And they'll go, that's fucking awesome. And maybe I'll buy a t-shirt. You know? So if you do that, you know, 20,000 times, then you can make a movie. So, and, and I don't use that number 20,000 times as like, as a joke number. I'm like, no. that's no. really <laughs> what you think about. Takes you a know, lot. it's like, it takes, it takes a lot 
And so, I mean, I started like, you know, going, okay, I need to build my, uh, cause who the hell's Kyle Hester? Nobody's heard of Kyle Hester. So how do I make people hear of myself? So mm-hmm. it's like, I had to become my own marketing platform, you know? So it's like, so, you know, in the beginning I'd be like, oh, so I'll do a little tweet about Andersonville. Hey, there's me in Andersonville. That was a fucking awesome experience. Check me out. And then I'd do another, you know, something that's not about, you know, a project that I did, but more like, um, hey, I'm throwing axes in the backyard. I'm, I'm Viking. My mom's from Norway. How cool is that? <laughs> you know? It, so, so it's like you, you get people to know who you are right. and then know what you're doing. So then they give a shit. That's really what it comes down to is why should people care about what you're doing? You right. know, besides the fact that like, you know, you, you have like this film that you're making and everybody's got a film they're making. So there's like, there has to be some kind of personal level to it, I think. Right. Gotcha. So would you, yeah, the idea is that you're as much the brand as whatever you're making is to, to, to a degree. Yeah. 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 And, and the thing is, is like, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty out there, um, you know, with like what you see is what you get, you know, for from me anyway. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I was told, oh, don't tweet about politics and that kind of stuff. And I, and, I, and I would never make anyone feel bad about what someone believes in because I, I don't I think that that doesn't serve a purpose. But it's like, you know, I also would never want to like walk a line so you don't know what I think. Right. Because yeah. then. Then, 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 then I'm just bullshit. Then go fuck yourself. And you're just like, you know, then, then you're not, it's like, if you stand for something or fall for anything, right. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Gotcha. So that's, that's what, that's where I come from. Um, and, and I've had people a long time ago, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Kyle, you're going to alienate half of your audience. And it's like, well, I don't, I don't think so. I think that like, it's like if somebody, okay, let's just do those numbers, okay? So if, let's say half of America is one way and half of America is another way, which is not true, but let's just say that's the case. Mm-hmm. Now let's say I try to walk a line, you know, never tweeting about anything or letting people know what I think you know, about anything because I'm just an actor, so I shouldn't have an opinion, right? So, so I don't do that. Then... And you then it's like, all right, yeah, there's this guy. Uh, yeah, he's cool. He's an actor. Yeah, he's done some cool stuff. You know, maybe, maybe we'll check him out. However, if you pick a lane, you know, or, or not, or just like let people know where you're coming from going, hey, man, this is fucked up. What's happening? You know, right. then somebody that goes, yeah, that's fucked up. You know, I, this guy, I understand where he's coming from. And so that ma- that gives them the ability to know you more personally, so they have something more invested in you. So it's so basically it becomes like, well, now that I know more about somebody, I can I can jam with them or not. And I've had plenty of people, you know, that are like super one way, you know, unfollow me or or whatever mm-hmm. because because of my opinions. But the the thing is, is like I would rather not be wishy-washy and pretend that I don't care about what's happening than to just let people know kind of like, you know, this is where I'm at. And you can see on my, on my page, it's like, you know, I'll tweet maybe once a day about something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, it's not like, you know, it doesn't follow through my, uh, my timeline or anything, but I mean, I think it, uh, I think it's better to be honest with, with, with your audience oh, and let, it, let let the chips fall where they may sure i think sure. also the other point too of that is is that uh you can't please everyone <laughs> so i mean yeah no matter if you ever take an opinion it's it's your opinion so it's it's your own personal view and i mean right. uh, either people are going to agree with you or people aren't going to agree with you and honestly if they don't want to agree with you that's fine whatever that's it's their that's their own opinion um right but I mean, like I've always been a matter, and I I'm very much you know also in you know I I talk about politics all the time. I for per, for me, I try to keep that on my own personal Twitter and keep the the podcast you know Twitter kind of separate. But at the same time, you know <laughs> that you want people to know that one you are also 
a human who exists in the world who, you know, sees the same stuff going on as everyone else does. So, of course, you're going to have a a, a message about that. Piggybacking off of that, like on on the Preacher 6 Twitter site and also my production company Twitter site, I never tweet about politics. But on my personal Twitter, it's like, you know, this is my world. Right. Yeah, yeah. You you know? Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. So, and you know, and I, and I've even said, I said, you know, I've even tweeted exactly that. It's like, you know what, if, if you just want to, you know, hear about, you know, only the film or only the movies that we're doing next and whatnot. It's like, I never tweet about anything over there. Please feel free. And it, you know, but it's like, I'm going to say what I'm going to say here. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, um, any kind of, uh, you know, Last thoughts here before we tell people how they can uh, kind of participate with the with the film. Anything um, that they should uh, know specifically about the the film and and where to check it out and everything. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So I'd say basically, if you to follow Preacher Six, you just like follow it at Preacher Six on Twitter, and um, and we have like an, in one of my pinned tweets like a list of people that will want to be notified when the DVD launch is. So, um, so click like on that and then I'll, I'll put you in that list and then I'll shoot you the link to the DVD launch when we have that launched. So you can do that either actually on any of my pages. We, I have that, um, link available. So at Kyle D Hester is my personal Twitter and then at preacher six. So, but other, but other than that, here's what I would say to a filmmaker who is just starting or, who has been there for a while doing other people's stuff and you really want to do something on your own start yesterday. It's like there five years will come and go faster than you can think that would have been possible. And so you do not want to be in this same position five years from now going, damn it. Kyle said I should have started. I didn't. And here we are five years later. And you know, so now I need to go call Kyle and tell him that, yeah, you're right. I should have started, you know, <laughs> yeah. right. you know, because the thing is, it's like, you know, even, even in this, in this podcast right now, you know, preacher six was begun three years ago. Right. So, so if you think about that, like how long it takes to actually do a movie, you know, through crowdfunding, it's like a, you, you have to have relentless perseverance, you know, to get something done like a movie unless you have deep pockets yeah and then you can just do whatever you and that's freaking awesome so do that too (laughs) but yeah start now basically is the big message start now and um don't let anybody tell you no and blaze your own path and that's that's how you're going to ultimately make any kind of name for yourself is by blazing your own path it's like you know Stan Lee wasn't Stan Lee before he started, you know, doodling little comics that made him who he was, you know? So awesome. Anyway, that's my message. Go for it. Very cool. And I would say, you know, guys, um, definitely anybody listening out there, go check out, um, you know, the preacher six website. Uh, they have a GoFundMe page, but I would never send you anywhere blind. Uh, you can go to their site and look at the trailers. They're amazing. Um, and then if you, if you agree, you know, uh, please be, you know, back this film. If you, if you can, if you have the means, there's a $10 limit on there even. So, uh, every little bit helps if you, if you get tired of all the, trailers you see from hollywood and think you know where where's independent cinema and original stuff absolutely um you know this is where you can support you know independent cinema so if you like the trailers and you like what you see there's a ten dollar limit on there and up uh so go fund me for preacher six like definitely back that up if you can and if you like what you see because that's how uh you know guys like kyle and guys like us here uh at the psychos nation they get to make films so definitely right. um yeah it if you like what you see, definitely back up the film here because uh, I know I, I'll be given a little something because I liked what I saw myself. So awesome. So, well, uh, Kyle, it's been a, oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just gonna say thank you for all that. That was that was awesome, and it um you know and it is uh I think when we all kind of help each other, it, it helps out. So I I do like to you know when people have links to something that they have online, you know, or an Amazon link or something like that, you know, just shoot at me and I'll I'll retweet it. You know, because I know that all of that helps. Awesome. Well, well it's been a, it's been a pleasure having it you has on. It's been lovely. 
hasn't it? It has. Um, where can people find you directly? I know we mentioned it a couple times, but just closing it out, where can they find you and more information about Preacher Six? Um, you can find more information on about the the film itself. Uh, you can find all kind like who the cast is and everything. Go to the website. It's um, preacher six dot com. And um, for me, my my Twitter is at Kyle D Hester, and uh, and then at Preacher Six on on Twitter. So I'm always there. So yes, it's me that's DMing. If you, if you want to, you know, if you have questions, feel free to shoot me shoot me a question. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Uh, well, uh, that's this has been an awesome interview, uh, and it's been a pleasure having you on, John. Where can they find you at on the Twitter machine? Uh, the Unreal J Wolves and Link at LA underscore Croft. And you can find me at Brian Connington. That's on the Psycho Show page. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus at Psycho Show. You can also find us on the Epicast Network at epicastnetwork.com. If you have a favorite movie or a question you want to throw away, you can contact us at cinemapsychoshow.com. And make sure you're subscribed to us on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Send us a rate, send us a review. We love getting those. And we will see you next time. Epicast. Epicast.